Hi everyone, as we get started with week three this week, um, we're going to be looking at community needs and assets, defining problems, looking at interventions, looking at how do we decide what assets are and how to build on them. I just want to share with you an example of a community that I've worked with in the south of Mexico in the state of Guerrero called Santo Domingo that is a great example of a community that was able to come together to define its problems and to create ideas for solutions. So this is a community that as an outside observer one might assume what the community's needs are. This is a rural community barely connected to telecommunications infrastructure. You're looking here at the main road in and out of the town. A few years ago, the community was devastated by flooding after a hurricane, and many lost their homes. It's a community with a very long history of migration, where people have left the community in search of better economic opportunities. The majority of families in this community have been affected by migration, and many of the resulting families are women, grandmothers, and mothers who have stayed behind after their sons, daughters, and husbands have left to go to the United States to look for work. Organized crime groups in the area have begun using the hills surrounding the community uh, as a way of controlling the thoroughfares, controlling the area for drug trafficking and bullying and intimidating people into being able to maintain control. Uh, the community has lost a lot of young people who leave because they do not have access to economic opportunities or educational opportunities. So when we talk about identifying problems, uh, from the University of Kansas, I like this uh, summary of what a problem is. Stated most simply, a problem is the difference between what is and what might or should be. So when you look at a community that has a lot of problems, it's important to be able to clarify what it is that you intend to work on. This is paraphrased from the readings from this week. You're going to start with what you know about the problem. This is general information about what the problem is. You're going to decide what additional information you need to be able to further discuss and further decide on what the problem exactly looks like. Based on what information you've identified as missing about what you believe the problem is, you'll gather information. And then once you have that information, you'll begin to define exactly what the problem is. And not just as, as a place where you can blame other people or blame other parts of the community or blame institutions, but define the problem as, as a thing that is shared by everyone in the community so that other groups and individuals would be able to take ownership for it as well. You're also going to avoid, at that point, assigning solutions to the problem. That helps avoid limiting solutions in this stage of, of problem solving. You're just defining exactly what the problem looks like and how it impacts other people around you. At that point, the group, or you as a practitioner, would begin to choose among multiple problems. It becomes important to learn how to prioritize what problems are going to be uh, tackled in this process, either as you, with you as a practitioner, in a group, community, in an organization. And then with the problems that are identified, analyze exactly what they look like, where they come from, who is involved, when they need to be solved by, when they began, where their roots are. That analysis will really start to open up the path for solutions to emerge. In the case of Santo Domingo, through a facilitated process with community members led by an organizer from that community, who works for an organization based out of Mexico City called the Popular Assembly for Migrant Families, he began to work with the community to allow the people who continue to live in the community, who are mostly elderly residents, grandmothers and grandfathers of people who have left the community in the past, 
he helped them get to a point where they were able to identify their roles in creating solutions for the community problems and to identify and prioritize exactly what the issues are. So through this facilitated process, they were able to come to conclusions about identifying the main concerns that affected them. So identifying the flooding, identifying their concerns about organized crime and increased violence in the community, identify education as a, a lack in the community. They were able to identify the family separation caused by migration as a primary concern. They were able to analyze the root causes of some of these problems, analyze the way that they've been affected by the problems, analyze um, the way that solutions that had been proposed either helped or hurt their community. They were also able to come to a common understanding of what the problems that affect their community are. And then, eventually, because they were able to prioritize their problems and prioritize the way um, that they would start working on those problems, they came to the conclusion that the main issue for their community is really the lack of access to meaningful educational opportunities, which limit their ability to advance their economy and strengthen other institutions because they keep losing young people. And the loss of young people to migration due to economic and educational opportunities really impacted and made them more vulnerable when natural disasters happened, or when um, organized crime became, became more of a threat to their community. So because they were able to analyze and clarify their problem, then they could start identifying the assets in their community um, in order to propose solutions. So they were able to, through the same facilitated process, identify which individuals, which connections, which institutions could help them which of their cultural practices of being a unified community and being able to share in community meetings and share um, in, in community spaces that allowed them to come together and have these conversations to begin with? What are the strengths of their infrastructure? What are the um, connections that they have to other places in the country or other institutions in the country that could help them? There really are endless possibilities as you begin to identify what assets are present in your community and what assets really are strengths that can be built upon. And in this case in Santo Domingo, they were able to identify that um, the same issue that causes them problems, which is migration, also is a strength that they can utilize and use resources that they have through their family members in the United States to create a fund, a binational fundraising campaign in order to create a school. As they've identified their solution will be to create a school that goes beyond primary education and that allows young people as they enter into adolescence to be able to continue their education without needing to leave the community. So this is just one example of many, many examples of how some communities come together as you continue the readings this week, I encourage you to think about how these things will be applied to your communities. I know that you will be sending me an email with more information about what um, problems you'll be identifying in your communities. Have a great week.